Not a great number of people know this, but there is a hidden fuel adjuster screw on this type of carburettor. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to find it and how to adjust it to help make your carburettor run at its best. Welcome to the Repair Specialist channel, because knowledge is power. So, let's get to it. Here's the carburettor. We have the main large adjuster screw here to richen or lean out the fuel at high RPM when the throttle is fully open. But we also need to be able to adjust the fuel air ratio to richen or lean out the fuel reaching the engine at low RPM. Looking at this carburettor, we don't have two screws here like some carburettors. We seem to be missing the low screw. So, with this in mind, enter the tiny hidden screw here at the top. This is indeed the adjuster screw that adjusts the air fuel mix at low or idling speed, and otherwise known as the L screw or low screw. This screw is not as accessible as the high screw. This was most probably to prevent the overusage of this screw. Some of these screws have a cap covering them. And I'm told that some are actually covered in a resin to prevent any adjustments, outside of a dealership maybe, that is. It may well be because they don't need adjusting anywhere near as much as the H screw does. And to adjust this screw, you need a much narrower flat screwdriver. But if you do feel that you need to adjust these, and you want to save time and money by adjusting it yourself, I will show you how to do this. I will also show how this screw alters the air to fuel mix and the effects that has on the engine. So I have this type of carburettor on my weed eater and so we'll go ahead and start the engine and make the adjustments. From the engine idling, if we turn the screw out anti-clockwise, then the engine will eventually sound like this. It becomes lumpy and struggles to idle. And from here, if we screw the screw inwards clockwise, then you'll see that the engine revs will start to increase, and increase more the more we turn it. So what just happened there? Well, with these carburettors, there is a needle that protrudes into the main jet. And it's the low screw that we've been adjusting at the top that is directly connected to this needle. And so when the needle screw is fitted in its correct place within the carburettor, it's sheathed within the protruding plastic part of the main jet. And if we could see the side of this main jet from this angle, we'd see a structure there. I've actually removed this part of the main jet so we can have a closer look. And when we do, what we see on the side of it is this cutout structure, an elongated triangle. So, within the carburettor, when the needle screw is fitted in place in here, the needle can move up and down, thus opening and closing this gap. During the carburettor's normal functioning, fuel is of course brought up the main jet. But at the moment, the needle is low and closing off the gap. But if the needle was to raise slightly, opening up some of that gap, then it would let some of that fuel out into the venturi of the carburettor and to the engine. As the needle raises, we're naturally going to get an increasing volume of fuel out from the gap. And of course, as we lower the needle, we're going to start to restrict some of that fuel, so there's less available for the engine. The needle will protrude into the main jet at such a level to allow just enough fuel out to hopefully regulate a decent idling speed. And just so we know, the way we raise the engine revs is to pull the throttle, which pulls the throttle cable, which rotates this throttle lever, and as the lever rotates, the whole throttle barrel mechanism raises, and the needle raises with it. And that exposes more of the gap in the main jet to allow more fuel out to allow for higher engine revs. So let's now get back to gathering an understanding of the low screw adjustments themselves. We'll start the explanation with the engine idling. So if we screw the screw in clockwise, the needle will lower. And if we screw it out anti-clockwise, the needle will raise. So when the engine is idling, screwing the screw out anti-clockwise will lift the needle and allow a little more fuel out. This will be adding more fuel to the air going into the engine and so richen up the mixture. 
And of course, if we were to screw this screw in clockwise, it would lower the needle, restricting some of that fuel going into the engine, and so the fuel to air mixture would be leaner. So if we've got a situation where the engine is idling like this, that's obviously not running at its best. Because this sound is a symptom that the engine is running too lean. So screwing the screw anti-clockwise outwards raises the needle out of the main jet slightly. This allows more fuel out of the main jet, thus richening up the fuel to air mix at low revs. And so of course we adjust this screw slowly while we're listening to the engine, where the engine sounds like it's running much, much better. On the other hand, if the engine is idling like this, then this is a symptom of too much fuel reaching the engine at low revs. And so in this case, we take the opposite stance. We screw the screw in slowly, lowering the needle into the jet, restricting some of that excess fuel coming out of the main jet, thus leaning out the fuel slightly, so that the engine is receiving the right amount of fuel, and therefore runs much better. Now, it's important to remember that we must not get this screw, which is the low speed screw, mixed up with the idling screw. This doesn't set the pace of the idling speed. This screw, the low screw, sets the air to fuel ratio mix going into the engine. The idling screw here operates the throttle. So when we feel that we've adjusted this low screw to a point where the engine seems to be running well, we can then put a further tweak onto the adjustments with the idling screw, either to speed up the low RPM slightly if it needs that, or to slow it down slightly if it needs that. Either way, we need to bring the idling RPM to a reasonable level. On this weed eater strimmer, I need to bring the idling RPM to a point where the head of the strimmer is no longer turning, but not too low that it's going to stall. So I get that nice sweet spot after adjusting the low screw. So that's the hidden L screw explained, and that's the low RPM adjusted. So now we've adjusted the low screw, we'll go ahead and adjust the single adjuster screw for the high RPM. And the adjustments on these are simple enough, so let's have a look. The H screw doesn't protrude into the main jet from the top like the L screw does, of course. It's actually set lower down deep inside the carburetor. And the tip of the H screw protrudes into a fuel hole from within the carburetor where the fuel passes the end on its way out of the main jet into the induction tube before it reaches the engine. So with the engine running on maximum, I'll take a flat screwdriver to the single adjuster screw. And if I unscrew it anti-clockwise slowly, you'll hear the engine starting to change its tone. Screwing the screw out like this is delivering more fuel down into the main jet for the engine to use and therefore there's a richer supply of fuel for the engine. More fuel than it can comfortably combust and so it makes this sound and the engine revs start to lower slightly. And if I carried on unscrewing this, the engine would most likely stop due to flooding too much fuel into the cylinder. And so if I start to screw it in again, we can see the engine revs start to raise again. And that's because it's reducing that large amount of fuel going into the cylinder and the engine can combust this amount much better and the engine does sound better. But if I keep turning it in the same direction, it's going to shut off too much of the fuel and there won't be enough for efficient combustion. And so the engine revs will lower once again and it will weaken the power of the engine. So what we're looking for is to screw the screw back and get that nice sweet spot between the two just on the edge of being rich slightly. And that's because if it's just slightly on the edge of rich, not too much, just slightly, then we've got a good amount of fuel going in there with its accompanying oil to keep everything nice and lubricated. What I want to know is what do you think? Do you know of a better way to adjust these types of carburetor? Because I'm not saying my way is the best. The community that reads these comments learns such a lot from everybody's point of view and everybody's knowledge who actually make comments here on this channel. And so I really respect all your comments. 
And because you've watched this video of details about this type of carburetor, then this video showing you how it works in depth from the primer system to the main adjuster screw will really capture your interest. So have a click through now and check that out next. But as always, it's been a pleasure explaining this. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.